Welcome to the Hales Owen Apostolic Church. Apostolic meaning what God says, not what man thinks. Please enjoy this teaching, and if you want more, please visit the YouTube channel or the website on www.halesowenapostolicchurch.org. Prove what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever does make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Amen. So, looking at these scriptures and what we've been going through and what we've been trying to achieve as a church, okay, there is a call to be answered and there is a testimony to be shared. Amen. There's a choice to be made from each individual of the church and as a whole of the church. And there is a purpose to be considered. So in Matthew 5, 14 to 16, you are called you are, sorry, you are the light of the world. You there is a personal. Yeah? You yourself are the light. Yeah. You haven't got to wait for somebody else to shine that light. <coughs> you are that light. Mm. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, <laughs> nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. So let your light so shine before men, that they may see our good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We've all been taught, we've all been filled with the Spirit, we all come to church, and I'll repeat it again, we get fat on the word. Amen. We all say what we're going to do, but we don't do it. Remember Jesus, he had literally told his disciples, you and you alone are the light, the light of the world. So let, as I said, let's make this personal, you are the light. But the truth is that our influence of the church or as individuals is not being felt in our society, in this community, mm. the way it should be. Now it's been reported that as high as 25% of the population they claim to be born again Christians. And yet, based on the impact we are having, surely this cannot be true. Perhaps part of the problem is that we have been led to believe our religious faith is a personal thing and that we should keep it to ourselves. <laughs> Our faith is personal in that it requires a personal decision on our, on our behalf yeah. as to whether or not we are going to believe in Jesus Christ and what he has for us. Mm -hmm. Jesus taught <coughs> we are not to keep it to ourselves. The words let your light so shine are the translation of a single Greek verb, lampas, lampato which is an imperative meaning that it is a command. You might have got that word mixed up there. <laughs> As we consider the light, we need to know we have a fourfold call or responsibility to the light. First, there is a call to the light. Jesus was and still is the source of that light. In John 3, 19, and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world mm. and men loved darkness rather than light mm. because their, their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light mm. and has not come to the light. Yeah, least his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light 
that his deeds may be closely seen that they have been done in God. Amen. God takes an ordinary person like you and me. Remember in Acts 10, 34, that Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth I perceive, perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter who we are or who we think we are, mm -hmm. where we've come from, where we're going, mm -hmm. God respects us all exactly the same, treats no one no different. <coughs> if you're a rich man or a poor man, you sit at the front. The poor man is not going to sit at the back of the church, you can sit right at the front row with us. Amen. There's everybody. And that's how God is. God uses us and he uses them to share his message to people who needed it. Everyone, when we share our faith, we spread the light. We shine the light. You were saved to shine, so don't hide your testimony or be ashamed to take your Bible with you to work. Let others know of your love for the Lord Jesus. Amen. Wherever we go. We are called to receive the light. It is not enough to, to merely be exposed to the light. Once again, we have a choice to respond to the light. We can come to the light or reject the light. John 1, 12, For as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Mm -hmm. Once we receive the light, we are called to walk in the light. And Paul reminds us again in Ephesians 5, 8, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. We were once darkness, but now we light. We are light in the world. How are we to live then? We are to live as children of the light. John speaks to the same problem when he says in 1 John 1, 5-7 This is the mes message we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. We are to walk in this light, and shine this light. Absolutely. We are also called to reflect the light. That's the central message of Matthew 14 16. And in John 9, 5, Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When Jesus returned to heaven, he left Christians with the responsibility to be that light. The Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians 2, 14, 16, Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless. Children of God without fault, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so I may rejoice in the day of Christ. I have not run in vain or laid in vain. In the same way that the moon merely reflects the light of the sun, Christians are to reflect the light of the sun. <laughs> yes. 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 Those who follow Jesus actually become reflectors of the light. Just as the sun is the source of light in our universe, and the moon reflects the light of the sun, Jesus is the source of light in the world, and we as followers are to reflect that light. President Woodrow Wilson told a story 
of an encounter which reflected the light of a changed life. He said, I was in a common place. I was sitting in a barber's chair when I became aware that a powerful personality had entered the room. A man had come quietly in upon the same errand as myself to have his hair cut, and he sat in the chair next to me. In every word the man uttered, though was not in the least moralising, showed a personal interest in the man who was serving him. And before, and before I got through with what was being done to me, I was aware that I had attended an evangelistic service, <laughs> because Mr. D.L. Moody was in that chair. I personally lingered in the room after he had left, and noted the singular effect that, that his visit had brought upon the barber shop. They talked in undertones. They didn't know his name, but they knew something had elevated their thoughts. And I left that place as so I should have left a place of worship. Mm. Isn't that amazing? Mm. Can we do that? <coughs> I'll work in the office tomorrow, Ben. <laughs> New school classroom yeah. in the offices where we are. Our lives should be lives that reflect something different than what the world has. Because quite simply, we have something that the world does not have. We have Jesus Christ in our lives. And that spirit lives in us, and guides us through everything that we go through. The call can be summarised this way. If you are in the darkness, come to the light. If you are saved, make a difference in the darkness. Mm. We have a testimony to be shared. Nobody can take that te testimony away. No, not even the devil. Mm. It's so powerful. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they lie to them. We put it under the basket <coughs> when we dance then. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Amen. Jesus tells us what we are. We are salt and light. Where that salt is hidden but a powerful influence, <coughs> light is visible and, and revealing influence. We are called to make a visible impact on the world around us. We cannot lose what we are, but we can hide what we are. And I feel that we do that as individuals, as a church, maybe. We don't do it enough to get forward and spread this word around. We, and we can waste what we are. We can waste it because we don't do nothing with it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there's a saying that says, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's exactly the same there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why then were Christians placed in the world? As we have noticed in that last message, we benefit them only when we live as salt and light in the world. Mm -hmm. If the people live immorally, and we live immorally, what is the difference? No. If they were dishonest or we are dishonest, then what's the difference? <laughs> when they do sloppy work, we do sloppy work. When they mumble and complain about everything, and we mumble and complain about everything. <laughs> they are looking out for themselves only, and we are looking out for ourselves only. <laughs> then what's the difference? There's no difference at all. We cannot benefit the world if we are like the world. We cannot benefit the world unless we show them that there is a better way. Our mission is to be the light of the world and it's our choice whether we shine or we hide. There is a choice to be made to let your light so shine before men. Evidently, there is some choice involved because it says, let your light shine. The first, verse 15 describes a situation that we would never do in the physical world, 
light a lamp and place it under a pot. Yet we do spiritually. The believer often allows his spiritual light to be hidden. What do, what do we allow to hide our light? For some Christians, their light is hidden under the basket of fear. Wow. We made a lot Joseph of Arimathea, <clears throat> a secret disciple. We are Christians, but no one around us knows it. Wow. How will they? We don't tell them. For some Christians, their light is hidden under the basket of apathy. For some Christians, their light is hidden under the basket of silence. For some Christians, their light is hidden under the basket of inconsistency. Most of us have some exposure to the glow in the dark objects. One man had such an object, so we took it into the dark area to try it out. It did not glow. So took it back into the light and he read the imprint on the inside. If you want me to shine in the night, keep me in the light. Church, if you want your life to shine for the Lord in the darkness, we have to keep ourselves in the light. Those that know the Lord are to shine in the midst of the darkness. That we all have these different, you know, I can't do this, I can't take my arm to work, I can't pray at work. So whether or not you're in a workplace, or where there's no other Christians, it's rough, things are discussed in there, pray that I will be able to get another job. That is what I want you to consider. Have you ever considered that God may have put you in that position to start with? Where you are is where God wants you to be, to tell those around you. Mm. Each of us. The greater the darkness, the more difference even the weakest light will make. Oh, How are others to see the, see the light and see Christ in us? So it's so easy to love someone who loves you. Return. Amen. It's easy to love the beautiful, kind, and the lovely people. It's a whole different story to love someone who doesn't deserve your love, mm -hmm. who doesn't look the part, or who doesn't treat you well. <laughs> and yet, that is what Jesus did. Amen. And he instructed his followers to do the same be different, mm -hmm. shine, still shine. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. How did Jesus love them? In Romans 5, 8, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Those without Christ only know conditional love, selfish love, erotic love, when you show an unworldly love, a love that is sacrificial, without limits, preferences or condition, others can't help but see Jesus in you. You are shining that light. If I said to you, I will give you I will forgive you when you have finally deserved my forgiveness, or I need more time, I will forgive you when I'm ready. Would you see the love of Christ in me? We do live in that sort of world, don't we? Oh. I know forgive, forgiveness is difficult, especially when you've been hurt in a way that you never thought possible. I know it's not with, within us to be able to forgive freely and without condition. But that's why your forgiveness of another is such a powerful testimony of Christ's presence. Of his presence in your life. You know how badly offence hurts and you know how freely Christ forgave you mm. in spite of your own offences. Mm. Colossians 3.13 instructs us, as the Lord has forgiven you, 
so you also must forgive. Go ahead, let go of that burden of bitterness, resentment, freely forgive. When we do that, we are shining that light. Jesus, others will see Christ in us. Jesus also said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Mm -hmm. That is joy. He also said, when we obey him and remain in his love, his joy will be in us and our joy will be complete. How can we know the God of this universe and experience his freedom and forgiveness and not be filled with joy? Yes, life is hard, <coughs> but joy is not about our circumstances which can change from day to day. Yeah. Joy is about our condition of being forgiven and free in Christ. Mm -hmm which will never change. Be a person who is joyful, not continually down in the dumps, and others will see Christ in us, and will still be able to shine that light. We have to show grace, not a critical spirit. It's easy to be critical of someone upon meeting them, and to show them grace. Being, being tuned in to how they dress, how they talk, how they display themselves, rather than their heart, for which Christ died. But the attitude was not exemplary of Christ in me, that was the flesh in me, the selfishness in me, the need to compare ourselves with others in the hope we come out ahead. People won't see Christ in us that way. As I said before, he is no respecter of persons. No. Jesus looks at the, our hearts. And that's why we are, we are called. We think we, that's, he made a mistake when he's called us, some of us do. But he's called you exactly, exactly how you are. Amen. To use you for a place in his kingdom. When you and I start showing compassion towards others, empathising with others, their situations or their hurts, and showing grace and mercy, rather than a critical spirit, we can be representatives of Christ as grace and a mercy. In Micah 6 8 we read, that's what God requires of his own, <laughs> is to do justice and to love kindness to walk humbly with your God. Are you being just kind and humble in your attitude towards <coughs> others? If, though, if so, they will see Christ in you. Amen. We have also have to watch our words. You read more hurtful, biting words by Christians on social media sites than ever experience than we ever experience from unbelievers. It's okay to feel strongly about something and voice your concern. Jesus was many times came out and said it like it was. But can we show a little love, understanding and grace by simply tempering our words? Ephesians 4 29 says let no corrupt talk out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, <laughs> that it may give grace to those who hear. It's been said, people who hurt, hurt people. Do your words, do your words heal rather than hurt? Do they lift up others instead of tear them down? When you speak healing, helping words, instead of, of backbiting words, stinging comments and self-righteous rebukes, others will see Christ in you instead of pain. In 1 Peter 15, 15-16 instructs, Jesus, as he calls you holy, so be holy in all you do. 
Mm. But it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. At first glance, you and I think, I cannot possibly be holy. But because of our purity and righteousness, that comes not from ourselves, but from Christ's Spirit in us. Amen. Jesus was holy. He was fully obedient to his Father. Mm. He set apart, so very different from the world. We can, be, we can be set apart too by slowing down long enough to hear God's voice. Notice people around us and say a kind word. Concentrate on being holy rather than hurry and, ha and hurry while the world is constantly pushing you to hurry up, to get it done faster. <laughs> Don't wait. Do it now. Mm -hmm. Scripture beckons us to be still. In Psalms 4.10, wait for the Lord. In Psalms 27.14, take time for God and others, that people will see Christ in you. <coughs> this is the one that might make other people uncomfortable around you, but it's what makes people uncomfortable too around Jesus. If people are only are truly going to see Jesus in you, they are going to see zealousness for the glory of God. Yeah. Don't be afraid to offend someone who claims to come in the name of God but is preaching a different gospel. Wow. Wow. Don't be afraid to offend <coughs> someone by speaking out about how they are oppressing the poor. Don't be afraid to confront legalism, religious pride, if it's putting an unfair burden on the servants of the Lord Amen. or distracting from the gospel of grace. Mm -hmm. Thank you. These kind of anger, these kind of words, they angered Jesus. It made him look like a madman with a whip in the temple courts. Mm. Jesus was adamant about protecting the holiness, the integrity, and the glory of God. Amen. When you do that too, people will see a side of Jesus in you that they hadn't seen before. Thank you. We can let others see Jesus in us by shining that light. And we can shine that light as a church as well as individuals. Jesus talked about the strength of collective light. Each house in this city with its light on cast a glow across the sky. And as Christians come together, there is a glow for the Lord that we cannot create individually. We shine brightest when we shine together. Hmm. You can't do it on your own. Nope. No man is an island. Mm -hmm. No, you are here for the church, for the fellowship, for working for one another, for lifting one another up, for going through the difficulties and the joys together, yeah. all for the glory of God. And then we can shine that light together. Mm -hmm. Thank you. People will see that light and Jesus in us. We are the light of the world, not just the church. Mm -hmm. That means we have to go beyond the church walls and take the light into the darkness. Then we can let our light shine before men and they will see our good works. Thank you. Only then can we consider the call. Only then can we can answer the call. We can share our testimonies. We do have a choice to make and church and a purpose and to be considered, but only we can make that change. If we don't get people saved, people will <coughs> perish. My family, my friends, yeah. your family, your friends, yeah. millions around us live locally. Yeah. Now, as the Queen said, now she sees it more and more, and more and more people are in darkness, yeah. living these lives. Louise was speaking earlier before the service as well and saying, you know, 
with everything that's happening, surely they're becoming turning to God more and more, but they don't. And a lot of people, they just have never heard the word of God spoken. Mm. 2 Timothy 4.2 Preach the word, be instant, in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long so with all long suffering and doctrine. That's us. Mm. Be ready whenever. Mm. On the way to football, on the way to work, on the way back. Mm. Doesn't matter where we are. And so does ourselves, doesn't it? We have that fear or that unbelief that we can't do it. Mm. How are they going to react? <laughs> it's not what Jesus told us, is it? He was our example. Christ. In 1 John 2, 4, 5. He that saith I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, <laughs> and the truth is not in him. Mm -hmm. um, how does that one make you feel? <laughs> but he who keepeth his word, in him verily, is the love of God yeah. perfected. Thank you. Hereby know we that we are in him. Mm -hmm. We know he's it. We are in him. And he's surely in us as well. Amen. So church, what are we going to do about shining this light? And what are we going to do so others can see Jesus in us? Amen. To fill our church you know, God's kingdom. <coughs> More people on the truth to feel filling mm -hmm. our church. As I said before I started, I wanted to, the rooms to be full mm -hmm. to preach these. Yeah. Well, when two or three are gathered, I am in the mix. Amen. Mm. So I can't let that stop it. Yes. But we have to do more as a church and as individuals to fill up our church. Amen. We've been, is it two years we've been? Two years, two years we've been here? Four, four years. And we've already grown in number. We did to start. We did to start, yeah. But by now we, we can have more and more in. Amen. And it's not all down to the pastor, it's down to every single one of us, including the pastor. But it's every single one of us that has to make the difference and shine our light, <coughs> share our testimonies, spread the gospel, preach the gospel, wherever we can, at home, with our families, and out at work, with our friends. We have so much need, a lot of them. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. 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 Thanks.